We've been looking at um, the Christian disciplines, the disciplines or the practices that Christians ought to have. We, we are not just saying them so that we can fill in the gaps in August and September. We are saying them because we believe if you pursue them, the issue of holiness, the issue of prayer, the issue of the word of God, if you pursue them, your life, your life, your life will be worth the living. I met um, some bishops and we were, we were sharing. And as we shared with them on Wednesday, I attended a meeting. We were opening a conference for pastors and bishops and Christian leaders. And as we were having a cup of tea together with some of those senior bishops, um, we reminded each other that when we came to know the Lord towards the end of the 60s and those that came to know the Lord early 70s, we were coming from a background of seeking the Lord because his coming was very near. It hasn't changed. But that's how we, 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 we came to know the Lord. Which meant, materials meant very little to us. And before I forget what I want to talk about is fellowship. A, a Christian discipline fellowship. A practice that is called fellowship. What we valued more was my relationship with the Lord. And so every time we met, the first thing we did was to greet each other. And because we are young people, we would greet each other with the legs and everything, with the hands and everything. You turn around, you go down, you come up, you eh, to kutenderesa, and then you are there for a number of time, number of minutes, just saying what God has done for you up to that point. The victories that God has given you. The challenges that you have gone through. And the other person would also respond with what God has done. And from that little encounter, you will hear what God has done from this other person and it will be a help to you. So it's like, I'm helping you, you are helping me, and it was very critical. I met one, one pastor of a bishop. Actually, now he's an archbishop. Because you see, the problem is that if you have so many bishops, they, they, the bishops will make you an archbishop. It's only Bishop Mark. We have not made him an archbishop. Uh, he doesn't want it. But anyway, so this archbishop's wife, I know her. When she got saved, if you, if, if, if you people know Makueni well, uh, she, where she comes from is Kasikeo. If you want to know where Kasikeo is, I think you need to go to Sultan Hamud. You have to go up the mountain as if you are going to Matiliku. Now, our sister got born again. She was a teacher training in Shanzu. And she got born again in Mombasa. And she was baptized uh, by Kayo Uko Baharini. Now, when she got back home, around where she, she was living, there were no other born again people. And I'm, I'm telling you, it is just in the, in, the, in, the, in the 2090s where everybody, including politicians, are all born again. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. They are all born again. But in those days to be born again, you are ridiculed. You, you, people talk anything about you. Actually, high school boys look at you and think you have got nuts. So it was not something that people, you know, today. And we had to put a, a badge that says, Jesus saved so that wherever we go, we can meet of our friends. And to put it, then you, need, you, you knew you were going to be ridiculed by people as I look at it. It's like you have to dress up. Sisters dressed up. 
And you'd know a sister is born again because of her dress. Uh huh. So our sister in Kasikeo goes, gets born again and uh, she comes home and there is no fellowship. Now, you people from Makwen, you know a place called Kibwezi. Kana Kibwezi. Kibwezi. Unakujua uko Kibwezi? On your way to Kitui, a brother gets born again and he has got born again when he's a student, also a teacher, training in Kakamega. And rumor has it that Makwini kuna dada ameokoka kazikeo. Na lazima kuwe na ushirika na ushuhuda. Ndugu wanatoka kibwezi mugu wakiulizia. Na hai kwa shida kukwe na mundu mutangi Mundu with Yesu. Tindini. And they would go all over until they find the sister. When they were giving that testimony because I sat there. It takes me back. The joy of going on foot to Kasikeo. On foot. You go the whole day to Kasikeo. Mwe na ushirika. The whole night unarudi na kuna fisi na vitu zingine barabarani ama unagoja basi za Mombasa pale Surutani inakupatia lift ulipe kitu kidogo madereva walikuwa wanawacha viti kadhaa ikitoka Nairobi kuna viti kadhaa za kupatia watu wa barabarani ikiwa ni tip zao Why am I saying this I'm saying this because now looking at this sister 46 years and what she cherished more is those years that people valued what fellowship and what Christianity was all about. Fellowship. Fellowship. The book of Acts and again this is where we can get our help. Our help is here. We can get it in, in fellowship. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42, if we can read up to 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. All the believers, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching all the, the Christian doctrines and principles and fellowship and sharing in meals including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. And to prayer. And you see, nobody actually, nobody had to come to the disciples and other believers on the day of Pentecost and say to them, you need to practice fellowship. But the Holy Spirit had come upon these people and formed an inner unity. And their natural inclination was to exercise it outwardly. And, and you know, I stand here and I want to encourage you to go for home sales. But I'm trying to say, I don't need to. Once you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ within you, listen, here within you, there will be some urge of you looking for people of the same kind. Hmm? You see, Gene C, 
They remind me of the revolt that we had as believers, as young people. Because when we were getting saved, there were only old people. But the young people, as we got saved, Kibwezi and Kasikeo is no distance. I'm trying to say from Kireaine to Odaya. You don't need a bus. Huh? You're looking for people in Kamasharia and Keru and Rwathia. And you go on foot. What are you looking for? Because someone else has the same spirit like yours. Greet your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, I don't want to know where you come from. I only want to know, do you love the Lord? See, imagine the letter on a dad of Kiro. See, dad, I'm very cute. Tamu. <laughs> so nobody and nobody should come to you once you know the Lord Jesus Christ you see when we did O levels and then you are going for A levels if you are a believer wherever you are people used to know each other so if you are from Chania High School and you're going to Kenya, uh, to Thika High School or Thika High School to Mangu High School, you would go straight and continue your leadership abilities. You would look for those of your company. Then you go to the university. You look for people of the same company. No wonder that fellowship helped believers. It did not matter where you are. You are born again in high school, even in college, you still love the Lord Jesus Christ. But we know some people who thought when you go to the university, you have to behave like with the good manners. Because we in a kizungumingi. And they are the ones who suffered the, 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 the much. But those that looked for their brothers, they found them. And I, I want to thank the Lord God for that. So fellowship is an important part of our faith. Coming together to support one another is an experience that allows us to learn. It allows us to gain strength. It allows us to show the world exactly what God is. What God is. Because fellowship gives us a picture of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit fellowshipping together each one of us together, we show all of God's grace to the world. Because none of us is perfect. We all sin, but each one of us has a purpose here on earth to show aspects of God to those around us. So each one of us has been given specific spiritual gifts. That's why it's important. You know, I love the story that we were given by Dr. Usu. Of the Korean. You remember the Korean who was in the choir with their own monitor? So that whatever they are confusing themselves is only themselves, they hear themselves. But that became evangelistic, right? More Koreans joined the church. Why? Because they see they are one of their own singing and enjoying the Lord there. Fellowship, key. The gifts that we have are different. You see, I told the people here that on Saturday, the other Saturday, the classics had a good time. The classics. Yale wale waze. Unawajwa wale waze. Tulukua na wakati. Wale waze. Si tukanza kuchuza mpira na Alice. Now I want you to imagine me and Alice. Just imagine. So we are, we are not doing much. We are just and then she would. And then we, you know, we did that for a while. Then I think within me, I thought, why can't I show her that I used to play? Nilianguka ile ujaona. Uchungu nimeisikia wiki mzima.
But in that fellowship, there are many things that happen. In that fellowship, because I even got uh, words after. Because as men gathered together, we talked about the issues of men in, in those ages. Eh? Eh, we talked and some of the challenges we have. But there is one who left that meeting with a blessing. Men ministered to him in a very personal way. Because in fellowship, we have different gifts and talents that God has given us. And when we come together, we make use of some of those gifts that God has given us. So fellowship gives us a picture of God. When we come together in fellowship, it is like a, as a whole demonstrating God. Think of it like a cake. You need the flour, sugar, eggs, oil, salt. Think of it. The eggs will never be flour. They are just eggs. None of them make up the cake alone. Yet, together, all the ingredients make a delicious cake. Now it is like that for fellowship. We all come together and make, even this church, the fellowship that we are together, we, because of everyone contributing, it becomes sweet to visitors that walk in. They see the sweetness that we have, but it is from every one of us. So none of them can make a cake. So it is the same way. Fellowship. All of us together show the glory of God. In the book of Romans 12, verse 4 to 6, for just as each of us ha has one body with many members, and these members not all have the same function, so in Christ we though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy according, in accordance with your faith. The second thing that I, I also think what fellowship does to us, fellowship makes us stronger. No matter where we are in our faith, fellowship provides us with strength. Being around other believers gives us the chance to learn and grow in our faith. It demonstrates to us why we believe and sometimes is the excellent food to our souls. It is great to be out in the world evangelizing to others, but it can easily make us hard and eat away at our strength. But when we deal with a hard-hearted world, it is good for us to get back into the comfort of, of our fellowship and share how it was and what happened. In the book of Matthew 18, 19, and 20, again, truly I tell you that if two of you or another agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst. In other words, fellowship. Let's not just fellowship. Let's allow the Lord in our midst. Let him act in our midst. So it makes us stronger. As I fellowship with those that are stronger than myself, I become... If you, if you walk with people that talk big, did you know you'll also talk big? Yeah. We had a dinner last night. <clears throat> and it was so humorous in that dinner. Because Manchester guys were very happy. Yeah. How about Arsenal? Oh, they were very happy. Uh, don't forget, even Liverpool, we were very happy. Do, do you know why we were happy? All of us are number one. All of us in the league, we, have, we, are, we all won, right? But you wait until they play ten games is when you discover who is who there. But uh, last night we were all, we, we were all very, very happy. But Manchester was quite happier than anybody else. I think it is because of where they are coming from. Eh? 
Yeah, they were beaten just the other day, so they have to encourage themselves. So, and a fellowship also, they, it provides encouragement. We all have bad moments, don't we? Whether it is a loss of a loved one, a failed exam, money problems, or even a crisis of faith, we can find ourselves down. If we go too low, it can lead to anger and a feeling of disillusionment, dis disillusionment with God. Yet these low times are why fellowship is important because fellowship, we celebrate each other. The best place for, my, for myself to be is with my family, right? Because when I come to my family, hata kama nimeanguka kizungu, bado wanafikiria mimi ndio naongea kizungu mzuri kwa hii dunia. Right? So it is always good to get back home and tell them, by the way, if, and you cannot lie to us. We will know. Yesterday I met somebody else who, had, who was deported. And they like it. They are not complaining. I know there are some people I meet who are deported and I know. But they never tell you they were deported. Why? They feel embarrassed. But it is because you haven't found why God brought you back. Because if God brought you back, I was deported. Yep. So I met another one who was happy they were deported. Why? Why? It is because people received him. He came back and told his brothers, by the way, nimeshikwa, nikaingizwa ndege na nimerudi ndio mimi. Na akaanza kufanya kazi ambayo Bwana amemuitia. Fellowship encourages us. Actually, when you have a problem, let me say this. I know when sometimes it ndakuwa ngumu. Actually, you want even to run away. For example, if you have a relationship and it breaks, you feel like even the bishop knew, or the pastors knew, or the members knew, everybody is looking at me like I have lost a, a leg. Now, the problem is when you go away. Because when you go away and people discover, then they look you that way. But can you imagine? Ukianza kuditoka hapa, na tunawewe, Sintakuwa nikiambia watu, before huyu waanza kwenda hivi, alikuwa naenda vizuri sana. Huyu, wacha apone utaona. Because what? I have known you. But a lot of us want to run away. Cover where? Hakuna maali unaweza jificha. If it has happened, own it up. You, you, you know, before, before we became this church, when we were people of God, anybody who fell into sexual sin, would come and confess. You hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Does it make sense to you? Yes. But we cover and cover and unless pregnancy shows up. <laughs> and then we wonder, which is worse? Oh, that is for another day. Fellowship encourages us. And the Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And last, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now. Now, at this time, especially now. Because the day that is coming, the day of the return of our Lord is drawing near. One of, one of the things that I, I like about, about, about our church, especially when you stand here, is because there is a clock there. That clock, ni mimi nilisema iwekwe. Na haijui. Sasa kama ingerijua, ingeniongezea kitu kidogo. But let me try to, let me try to, 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 to kind of summarize the vast the verses that we read, starting from 41 to 47, if you like, if I can summarize. Because fellowship is the relation that we have with one another as Christians. And it is based on the relationship that we have with the Christ. When you and I become Christians, three relationships change. 
Number one, Jesus becomes our Savior. Number two, God becomes our Father. And number three, the church becomes our family. In other words, believers are now my brothers and my sisters in Christ. And I am accepted in the family of God. And therefore, from the Acts 3, I find three things. Let me read that scripture again from 41. Peter has just finished preaching and here is what happens. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadily in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, sold their possession and goods and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continually, daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. I like that. Having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. Three benefits and then I'm done. Benefit number one. Fellowship builds friendship. Fellowship builds friendship. The early church really was a close, really was a close knit group. They were all together. They had everything in common. I believe that's the reason why every church and such good relationship is because of the commitment to Jesus and to each other. Whatever group that you are in, whatever cell that you are in, whatever men's group you are in, the strength of that group is the commitment that the individuals have with the Lord Jesus Christ because out of it, it is easier for us to bond together. It builds friendship. Jesus said this about friendship. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you, John 15, 15. If you want to build good friendships in the church, then you need to get involved with things in the church. You cannot expect good relationship to be built if you are not fellowshipping with the other Christians. So fellowship builds friendship. But it takes time and energy and effort. For us that have been in this church for a while, anybody that has been with us for 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years, when they leave to build another relationship, it becomes hard. So where do they come back? I've gone to some places for fundraising. And who do I meet? Half of my congregation. Why? Because these men made friends when they were living with us. And you know that. We go to weddings and I see some of you. Why? Because this person made friends with you then. There is a type of friendship. You see now, at, at the age that I'm in, I, I, I cannot build meaningful relationship. The only meaningful relationship that I've made are people that I've worked with for years. Those are the people that have, we have some meaningful relationship. For example, Ruth Carogano. 40 years I have been with that lady in this church. 40. So our relationship with that lady is that I know all her children. I know her husband. I know where she comes from in Gatondo. I know where she is married in uh, Embu. Did you get that? So, so in, in other words, wherever I am, even her son who is in the UK, when she, he hears there is something happening on our side, they will sign the condolences immediately. Why? Because we grew them together. Actually, the joke, at one of the joke was when... Uh, when they started having boys, there is uh, the firstborn, then Nancy, then the boys started coming. They wanted us to exchange 
I exchange my daughter with them, they give me one of their sons because uh, Nancy wanted a girl to play with. And now those are the jokes for another, uh, another day. But that's how the boys were feeling and the girl was feeling that we can do that. Friendship. Friendship. There are some of you because of your prayer groups. Even when those people have left, you still know where they are. Because of training together in the school of leaders, going to encounter together, there are some families that you have already established. Those friendship, those friendship will last for a long time. And I want to thank God for that. So, fellowship builds friendship. Two, fellowship builds unity. The church is called to be united. Unity is having everything in common and being of the same mind. Paul wrote in Ephesians 4 saying, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. If the Lord is that interested in the unity of the church, then we should be interested in it as well. We are called to keep or maintain the unity of the church. Meaning, make every effort means be zealous. Make every effort. But make every effort for unity in your group. Make every effort for unity in your fellowship. Make every effort. Make every effort. Make every effort. Fellowship builds unity. It did in the early church. Because you see, when if you read that scripture, it tells you they had everything in common. Why were they having everything in common? It simply meant, if I have it, you have it. That's what it meant. When we were growing up here, we used to have a joke like this. Some of the ladies in the ladies group, that early group in the, in the early 90s. That if Kimanis are eating food, my children cannot go hungry if Kimanis are eating. What that meant, when I asked was if he were, a lady would come and pass me. And they go to the kitchen and she would come out carrying something. If it was cooked, they share. We are baby and Sufuria. Tarudisha Sufuria Badai. Of course, one of them is a Sifiwe. Atujuagi wakati mwingi. Tunajuaga tu wakati tunambio. Naunga. Imeisha lafu nasema. Na hile nirideta. Ah. Tuligawana na nani. Sawa. Because that simply meant. Mtoto wako hawezi enda shule. Na wangu wafukuzwe. Apana. Tunagawana fees. Hili kama watafukuzwe. Wafukuzwe wo. Now some of you are saying. Apana. Kila mtu ajitete. Hiyo inaribu ushirika. Fellowship is brought up by where, what, if I have and you have it, then I will live like I have. There are very few people that knew I was not working in Nairobi. Very few. When I was just an evangelist like uh, Sharago. Very few. Because I would dress up well. My shoe would be polished. And I will carry a smile. And when others are taking yogurt in town, I will also get some. But going home, I would walk and nobody would know I've walked. Because I'm in Nairobi, I'm in Zuri. I'm in the same place. 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 But I tell you why I lived that way is because the brothers that were working, they made sure that I was as comfortable as I could. Naishi vizuri, nakula vizuri, naoga vizuri, nalala vizuri. Yani hizu, kila kitu. Yangu tu ni kutoka na kuweda kubiri ijiri. Wachacha diyo walijua huyu hafajawi kazi. Siniku kanyange kidogo. Lakini hapa, wale wafanyagi kazi, wamehunyuka. Na huko na mafuta kwa. Tu lotion tu hili. Eh? Gawa. Ka lotion kamoja. Eh? Huyu dada ulimuona na hiyo nguo tu. Anakujaga na hiyo jumapiri. Hakina na hiyo shaka Saturday. Na weo umejaza mbaka zime kunjana. Yani ukienda kutoa. Lazima upige pass. Na uliku umepiga pass. Lakini pada umeziweka zine. Yabu salimia jirani yako. Unisaidie tu. Umulize jirani. Kuna nguo. Umeka mezi sita. Bida kuva. Goja akwambie. Unanguo. Murudirie tena. Unanguo. 
Eh, umekaa miezi sita na hujavaa. Tuwe wa Kristo, nyosha mkono juu. Wale wako na nguo na hawajavaa miezi sita. E, nimeona wengine muko na hamtai kuinua. Sasa hizo guo, funga vizuri rete hapa kanisani. Tupatie wale hawana. Unity comes because people would know each other. They shared wale walikuwa nazo and this was so neat a place of course as i said people looked down on them fellowship builds unity fellowship builds unity and then finally fellowship builds god's kingdom notice the last phrase of our text from acts chapter 2 and the lord added to the church daily those who are being saved our fellowship the relationship we have with one another and with jesus should be a witness to the world so it is not just a discipline it is something that i want to live for who are the people that frequent your house are they other believers that you can have time to pray with and fellowship with who are these people that frequent or you meet regularly who are these people let's build fellowships that will we will have things as the lord blesses us and those that have i used to be in a cell that was called ku cell and ku cell majority of us were in kenyatta university actually if we stayed together i would have finished my phd i'm telling you for sure because madaktari di walikuwa wengi na bad wanakuambia i will walk with you ni mapepa nitakusaidia kuandika hizo tutatsonga na wewe and a few of us tried to to look for papers i was i was discouraged when my transcript of my masters did not get where i wanted to go but i was ready but KU at that time the strikes were many and also The chancellor there was not in good terms. The one that was before had good terms. There was no lack of salaries. But the one who followed the other one, I'm not mentioning their names, had a problem. He was not in the system. So a lot of time our brothers and sisters would have no no salaries. But because we knew, we made sure they lacked nothing as a fellowship. And that's what a fellowship is all about where we know where you are and we stand with you and we help you where we can uh, to live the life that will honor and give God all the glory and that establishes the kingdom they were devoted to the fellowship the early church was devoted to the fellowship and what happened then is so significant because of their devotion to God and to the fellowship they were able to carry anybody along with them fellowship now help me to to get to know your neighbor ebu msalimie neighbor mwambie neighbor do you belong to any fellowship wait for them to tell you which one wait for them just wait for them to tell you which one now that they told you Now tell me how many did not know what we are talking about yani they don't belong to any they have no idea of what fellowship is all about ah siwacha kumficha usimfiche si ama rudieni tena muulize wewe ni wa ushirika gani muulize tena akikataa kuangalia niangalie uinue mkono huyo hana ushirika hata Remember fellowship fellowship is key fellowship is key fellowship is important let's pursue those that love the lord like ourselves and have fellowship with them na ndio wanatusaidia ili kukiwa na mtu ambaye hajanyooka anaenda hivi katika ushirika tutamgundua upesi na tutaongea na tutasaidiana bwana yesu asifiwe so as a discipline fellowship is key 
Let's encourage each other to belong to a fellowship somewhere, to a cell somewhere. If you're a young people, there are different groups in the young people. If you're a lady, there are different groups for ladies. If you're a man, there are many groups for men. And if you live wherever you live, we have cells everywhere. You can make sure you join one of them because fellowship will help you grow in the name of the Lord. Father, I want to thank you for this discipline of fellowship because in it, we are going to find our help. In it, will be encouraged in it. We are going to have, dear Father, our lives established and will be stronger as believers. We want to thank you, dear Father. Give us that devotion to be devoted into it in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask all this in Jesus' name and everybody say, Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much.